Hello everyone and welcome to Everyday Elite Code. This is Teer Toshi and today we are going to solve the decode waste problem. And it's one of the, it's, it's a medium problem, but uh, it's one of the most uh, challenging problem in terms of uh, memoization, especially if you do not use a lot of memo memoization. Uh, this problem exposes you to memoization and recursion also. Um, so the the idea here is to understand the logic of the problem, then uh, go with the simpler examples, understand what the problem is talking about. Then we'll go into the DP part and the memoization. So let's just understand what the question is. So the question says that a message containing letters from A to Z is being encoded to numbers using the following mapping. So you have a message that you are sending. Uh, you are sending, sending hey, H E Y. Now this is encoded such that H will be the corresponding number uh, in the one to 26 uh, letters. E is the other number and Y is, y is uh, 25 uh, and so on. So A is one, B is two, Z is 26. Now what you are given is when you send this message, you don't really send a message as ABC. You send the message as one, two, three. So these one, two, three, whatever it is, your job is to find the number of ways in which you can interpret or decode that one, two, three. So given a non-empty string containing only digits, determine the total number of ways you can decode it. So the question is total number of ways and not the actual uh, decoded part. So that makes it a little easier. And whenever you see total number of ways, always think about recursion in your mind or uh, dynamic programming, uh, something like that. So total number of ways should click, should make sure that your mind is triggering towards recursion. So now what is the input? The, so let's go about their examples. If you had a one, two, then you can decode one as an A, two as a B separately. So you could have had a string saying A, B, or you could have taken the 12 and you could have said that 12 is nothing but an L. Uh, so there are two ways in which you can decode it and you can interpret it. Similarly, if you had a 226, you could take the two separately. That would have been a B. This would have been a B and six would have been an F. So that is why you have a BBF or you could have taken 22 ones. So that is a V if you see and a six is an F or you could have taken 26 together and a two on the other hand. So it would have been a B and a Z. So the number of ways ideally is three. So that is why you have an output of three. Now, uh, coming to simpler examples, these are the examples given by them. Um, let's take a look at what our examples would have been. So if, would, if I would have had an example of uh, zero three, then I would say zero, that means I don't really, I can't really decode a zero. Okay, so that is why you have an output of and zero three when you talk about. So zero three on the other hand also does not really indicate anything, right? So it's not a particular letter that I can say with a zero three. So that is why your output out here is a zero. Okay. Now coming, going ahead. So anything that starts with a zero, zero, one. So if I give you zero, one, two, three, four, I would say the number of ways I can, I can decode this particular string is zero. So any string that starts with zero, the number of ways you could decode that particular string would be zero because you can't decode a zero one. If this one would have been here, and there would have been a 10 here, then you can decode the 10th, right? But you can't really decode something that starts with a zero. That's what I'm trying to point out. So that is one example. 
um now if you take an example of uh, 1 2 3 4 5 5 if you wanted to decode this you might have said that this 1 over here corresponds to an a so i decode this as an a and then i say that uh, then then i will find the number of ways i can decode 2 3 4 5 5 or you could have said that i can take a 12 first that uh can correspond to a uh, if i take a 12 first then that 12 corresponds to an l and plus the number of ways i can go 3 4 5 5 so i can say that uh i can take a 12 as l and then add the number of ways um of the remaining digits so that's one way now if, if that's one example uh if the number would have been um 7 8 1 2 3 something like this then you could have said that okay 7 corresponds to f a b c d e f g so 7 corresponds to g this guy 78 on the other hand so you take a understand that this is a g and then the number of ways then you recurs the number of ways for 8 1 2 3 right uh, or on the other hand you say 78 78 does not really correspond to anything so you can't really go there uh, so that's the idea here so okay so we have looked at a couple of examples and now i think we should walk through a code and um, uh, before walking through our code let's understand why this problem is a dp problem and why do you need memoization at first so if i just look at the 1 2 3 4 5 and walk through this example rather than going through any other example 1 2 3 4 5 5 what will happen is i will say this is an a the one is an a then you find the number of ways you can uh, uh, so the number of ways you can decode 2 3 4 5 5 so you would say that the number of ways you could decode so i can consider the 2 as a b and then uh then i would say the number of ways to recurs on 3 4 5 5 again if you see this is an overlapping sub problem but let's go ahead then all or you could have said that rather than taking this uh to itself and interpreting this as uh as a number of ways as 2 um i i can interpret it as a 23 first so the 23 would correspond to uh, w so you can say w and then the number of ways you could go for 4 and 5 um that's how you can do it and you can do it using recursion um uh, the basic idea of recursion would have been that if anything that starts with a zero you say that there is zero number of uh, uh zero number of what zero number of ways in which you can decode that string uh and if you could have had the starting character as 1 2 3 anything you could have taken the first character you could have taken it sideways and then you can recurs on the remaining characters or you can take the other two characters the first two characters if they lie between 1 and 26 uh and then recurs on the last the remaining characters uh the i mean you skip the two characters here in this case and in the previous case you skip only one character um yeah so i hope that's clear i'm not sure how clear i made it um yeah so now we have understood that there is some overlapping sub problems right so our approach to recursion should be this okay uh, let's just write down what we will do if there happens to be happens to be a string that starts from 0 just return a 0 because uh you cannot really decode a string that starts from zero if there happens to be a string 
starting from some other number but okay but having the next number such that the next number and the starting number starting number combine to have a number number to have a number uh, that is in between 1 and 26 so for example if i consider a 1 2 3 4 5 uh, you have a 1 and then you have a 12 also so you take the 1 and recurse on these digits or you take a 12 and recurse on this digits but if you had a 27 2 7 something 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 you just take a 2 and then recurse on this, these digits because 27 uh, is not something that we can uh, we can consider it to be a decode i mean a way of decoding so yeah so that's that's the recursion idea um okay so now let's look at the code and let's walk to through walk through an example so one two three four five is the example that i am thinking of walking through and i will have a call stack here um let's walk through this code so first i have a particular string s that is inputted so that is my one two three four five uh, I have a memoized vector of size of the string and everything is uh, initialized to minus one initially just to understand that uh, I have not really recursed on this and then I call the helper function with uh, three important parameters. The parameters are the string uh, itself. Uh, zero that means I am going to start from a zero. Uh, that's the index zero and memoization is this particular vector that i'm talking about now when i go into the helper function i will first check uh if i is greater than the string size what is the string size for us one two three four five so it's going to be uh the string size is five i is zero initially so is i greater than no it's not greater so i don't really return anything then the then i have a variable that finds the number of ways that is the integer variable number of ways and I initialize that to zero. Um, remember that the call stack, whenever I had the call stack, I had the helper call stack, one, two, three, four, five is there. Uh, the index is zero and the index and everything over here is minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. So this is the first uh, call that is happening and my pointer is out here, Oops, my bad yeah the pointer is here then what happens uh then you have a memo you check if this particular call has already been taken place if it has taken place you just return the memoized value but it's not taken place so then you check if my string this is the starting index of the string is it starting from a zero if it starts from a zero you just return a zero as simple as that these are simple base cases uh, if if it does not start with a zero, then what do I need to do? Then the number of ways would be the number of ways I have till now. Plus, uh, I will call the helper function with i plus one index this time. And I will just pass. So a helper function is called one, two, three, four, five. Uh, i plus one, so one. Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. The memoized value has not really changed. When I call this, the call stack, the pointer is now at one. So this function starts running. Now with this function starts running, again I check this guy. I is one now. This is five. So this is not true. You say that this integer ways. Now this ways is for this particular function. Uh, the second helper function then you have the memoized if you check whether it has already been solved this problem has already been solved and give me the original answer uh, then you have s of i is equal to zero then you return a zero but it's not equal to zero ways again for ways you find helper function and you say that i have not really hit the base case so call the helper function uh, call with i plus one remember i am at the i equal to one 
phase. So i plus one is a two now. So I call the other helper function. Remember, it's one, two, three, four, five, two minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. And now what happens is I am going to be at zero, one, two. I'm going to be at the third index. So i is two i is greater than equal to 5 no 2 is not greater than 5 so this is a false then you have the number of ways is 0 then you have a memoized of i uh, you have not really solved this particular problem so it's still minus 1 so this is not true you go ahead and then again you call this guy uh, you keep calling this way helper function 1 2 3 4 5 this is 3 everything over here is minus 1 and now uh, this comes out here. Similarly, the helper function will come here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at 4, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. I hope you are getting it. I am not sure uh, uh, how well I am doing it at this point. And then again, that means at 4, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's pointing at here. And you again call the helper function 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you pass a 5, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Now, when you pass a 5, you definitely know that i is 5. So the string size is 5. So, it's equal. So, this condition becomes a true. And you return a 1. Where do you return a 1 now? When you return a 1, you return it at this ways. The number of ways and for this, this function. For this function, the number of ways. That becomes equal to 1. Okay. Now since, okay, and, and because you have returned this, this comes out of the call stack. The number of ways over here becomes one. Uh, I come here. Now if I is what? I is four. Is it less than equal to the string size minus two? I is four and string size is five, five minus two. Answer is no. So you don't really go in this if statement and memoized version at what i memoize the 4 so that means memo of 4 has been changed to 1 so that means this thing over here has changed to 1 okay so because it's a uh, it's referenced everywhere this becomes equal to 1 because it's called by reference so everywhere this becomes 1 whenever i change it okay now this is done uh, this function returns a one similarly the ways at this point also gets a one from the above function ways becomes equal to one then three uh, i is three is it less than equal to five minus two answer is yes uh, it's less than equal to five minus less than equal to so three is equal to yeah so x is a substring uh, of from starting from 3. So 0, 1, 2 and a 3. So it's 45. Uh, now if I convert it, I check if it is in between 10 and 26. Of course it's not. 45 is not in between 10 and 26. So you don't go in this if statement. You come out and the memoized version, this becomes equal to uh, the memoized of 3 that this guy over here also becomes equal to 1. So this guy becomes equal to 1. Uh, similarly, so everywhere this guy becomes 1. This becomes 1. This becomes 1. Okay. So the number of ways becomes 1. I return the number of ways as 1 and then come out. Okay. Now it's at 2. So it's 34 that is going to be taking place actually it's going to be three four five uh, so you say again i'm just writing the memo has to be three four five so three four five only one way so even this becomes one uh, i'm not going through this again memo of two becomes one uh, you come out of this call stack because it's a very similar case i'm not taking that case this becomes one out here. This becomes a one. Okay. Now it's at the index one, and this time two, three, four, five is considered. So what happens is the number of ways 
return from the top layer is uh, is one then you say that this condition is true then you say that x is going to be uh, 23 this time so this condition becomes true and you call a helper function for i plus 2 now i plus 2 helper function 1 2 3 4 5 i plus 2 means 3 and then you have minus 1 minus 1 1 1 and 1 now you see that when i call at this guy memo of 3 is not equal to minus 1 this becomes true because memo of 3 0 1 2 and a 3 it's a 1 so you return that one out here straight away without really doing any computation there this call is done so the memo becomes one plus one memo of one becomes equal to two and this two is passed on uh, at this particular point okay this two is passed here and uh, when you pass this two here this guy ways becomes 2 for i equal to 0. I go to the next point. This All these conditions become true. Ways will call helper of i plus 2. So helper of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. i plus 2 is a 2. Uh, now and minus 1, 2, 2. Sorry, 2, 1, 1, 1. And 0, 1 and 2. So it's a 1 over here. So when you see a one out here, it means that you have to add one to your memoized answer. So memo of zero becomes equal to two plus one, which is equal to three. So this is this comes out, and finally, because this three is, comes here, I return the three from this. So that's why I will return a three now. If, Let's take a look at what is happening when I run the code. Uh, I should return a three. So this is how I am getting a three. You can walk through some other examples to understand the code better. Uh, so idea is for, for the memoization part. If you look at the memoized version of at zero, it's for everything. That means one, two, three, four, five. I am considering the memo of one will give me the number of ways I can decode two, three, four, five, and that is two. Memo of uh, two will give me three, four, five, and so on. So that's how we solve this problem. Um, I hope you have understood the problem on the walkthrough before, and you have understood uh, the recursion also. And uh, I know it was pretty heavy, uh, honestly, even I felt it heavy while uh, explaining this one. And maybe this one is a little longer, but it's worth your time. Uh, I hope this one is worth the time that you devoted in. So thank you for watching the video. And uh, thank you for uh, uh, subscribing to the channel. And I hope I keep doing this great work. And um, I keep uh, making good videos. and making uh, people uh, the yeah the idea is to get better thought processes in this um, so thank you very much for watching the video and if you like the video please like comment and subscribe i'm not really spoken about this but yeah uh, it does matter and thank you so much for your time